Here's an ordinary fish. And here's a fish that was supposed to become a human. But it didn't. And not because it didn't come out of the ocean. The second fish has more intelligent eyes. But there's almost no difference between them. And that's why... Oh, and do you see that silhouette in the shadow? This big ugly monster is one of the key characters in this story. And it hates the intelligent fish. But I'll tell you more about that later. So the ocean world is an eternal struggle for survival. The big and strong eat those who are smaller and weaker. 400 million years ago, it was the same, only on an even larger scale. Real monsters inhabited the ocean. Giant reptilian fish ate long sea centipedes. Some fish were covered with bony shells. Others had razor sharp teeth. As a result, some weaker fish escaped the ocean to survive. Other creatures left it to get food or out of curiosity. And so, according to the theory of evolution, in the next millions of years, these fish began to grow limbs and hair and climb trees. And you know what happened next. And now, let's imagine that nothing forced fish to go to dry land. What if the ocean wasn't so dangerous and there were a lot of algae and phytoplankton and fewer ancient and giant sharks. There's food and there are no enemies. Why would fish need to leave this place and spend a couple hundred million years growing limbs? Fish could chill and hang out in the water. Some reached the surface, but they didn't like it there. Strong winds, lightning flashes, it all looked unfriendly. Millions of years passed and fish were still around. More dangerous sea inhabitants appeared, but fish just grew longer fins to swim faster. Other fish grew plates on their tails to fend off enemies. But in general, most fish still look the same as they did millions of years ago. Their brains were developing. They learned how to communicate with one another using echolocation and movements of tails and fins. All day long, fish swam, looked for food, multiplied, and hung out together. It made no sense for them to evolve. And now, let's take a look at the history of humans. So, fish came to land and grew limbs. Then the struggle for survival began. Some creatures became carnivores, others turned into herbivores. Some ate grass, and others noticed ripe fruit on trees. These crawling creatures started reaching for fruit. After millions of years of such attempts, the creatures' limbs began to grow longer. They stood on their back legs and finally became upright. These ancient animals, the ancestors of primates, learned to climb trees to get more fruit. Then some of them started using stones to crack nutshells. Others began to throw sticks into branches to knock down ancient apples. The more these animals interacted with the environment, the more their brains developed. In addition to saber-toothed tigers and other ancient monsters that tried to eat primates, there were also bad weather conditions that caused a lot of problems. Ancient apes began to hide in caves and even create shelters from branches and leaves. Then someone accidentally started a fire, and it changed the rules of the game. New neuron connections opened up in the brain, and it led to abstract thinking. People built bonfires in caves and watched flames cast shadows on the walls. Images began to form in their heads. The ancestors of people began to make drawings. And so, step by step, over millions of years, they evolved into Homo sapiens. Of course, no one knows precisely how it was, but let's assume that evolution worked this way. The struggle for survival formed the human brain. And now, let's go back to the ocean, where fish swim. They can move from side to side, up and down, and they don't need to reach any branches and fruit. Food is floating everywhere around them. Fish are cold-blooded, so they don't freeze. They don't need to hide from the rain or anything else, so they don't need to build roofs and shelters and start a fire. But still, something changes in their minds. Fish often swim to the surface to see this bright light from the sun. Through the clear water, they see the starry sky and the bright moon. And of course, these pictures form new neural connections in their brains. Fish are curious, and they think about how to explore the land. 
Their gill-based respiratory system doesn't allow them to be out of the water for a long time. Fish begin to contemplate this world. Over hundreds of thousands of years of evolution, they learn to communicate with one another and begin to understand how the cycle of life in the ocean works. Some fish form large colonies and build houses inside coral reefs. But these houses look like big anthills, not like buildings. Fish stay there to hide from enemies and to have rest. Also, fish meet other enemies, birds. Gulls and pelicans catch lunch when fish rise close to the surface. Small fish decide never to swim there and create a law forbidding them from approaching the surface. The appearance of this unspoken statute forms society. Some fish train to fend off seagulls. Fish hold sharp stones, pieces of coral, or shells in their teeth. And when gulls catch them, these fish hit the bird's feet with corals. Also, fish manage to catch their winged enemies. When some seagull dives under the water, fish attack it from all sides. They do this to study the seagull's body and understand how it can fly and breathe on the surface. Fish become wise creatures, like highly developed dolphins. They understand more and more about the planet, but don't strive to get out of the water because there's no need for it. But then they discover something creepy. Fish swim toward the shore and see how big bald creatures without scales with smooth skin, arms, and legs dive into the water. Fish swim closer to get to know them, but these creatures catch them with their webbed hands. Now fish have another more dangerous enemy, the sea people. They are intelligent, cruel, and strong. To understand these creatures, let's go back to the real world and look at seals, dolphins, whales, and walruses. All these animals are mammals, which means warm blood flows in them. But why are they so different from fish? Seals and sea lions have the same ancestor as dogs. Manatees and elephants have common origins. Whales and dolphins are marine versions of hippos and hoofed animals. Hundreds of millions of years ago, the ancestors of all these mammals were cold-blooded fish. They got out of the ocean and began to explore the land. Their bodies started to change and their blood temperature rose. But some of these animals decided not to go far from the water. Those that left the ocean became dogs, bears, and elephants. And those who stayed close to the oceans and seas became mammals adapted to the water. They didn't explore the land for various reasons. Some animals hid in the water from land enemies. Perhaps some couldn't spend a long time under the scorching sun. They transformed into animals with fins. They don't have gills, but can hold their breath underwater for a few minutes. And now, imagine if primates living in trees moved to the shore. Their skin would lose its fur, webbing would grow on their fingers, and their whole body would get covered with a thick layer of fat. They would develop intelligence and become sea people. Each of them would weigh as much as a polar bear because of subcutaneous fat. The fact is that all marine mammals need a lot of fat to protect their body from the cold. A large amount of fat makes them mobile and fast in the water. Now, intelligent, peaceful fish have to fight with cruel sea people. But who will win in this conflict? I think we need another video to find out. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.